Good morning to you. Mark Stout of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is July 7th, 2021. going to leave the webcam off today. You don't need to see me. I look terrible anyway after being out here trying to track down Elsa these last two days. So let's focus on the graphics and what's going on with Elsa this morning. First, a visible satellite picture. It's a good thing that Elsa is moving inland now up here near Steenhatchee and Horseshoe Beach area because it looks like the low-level circulation got tucked underneath somewhat deep convection once again. This pulsing activity has been going on the last day or so where the shear would win out and then it would let up a little bit and the low-level circulation would kind of align with the deep convection. And that is why Elsa became briefly, eh, maybe six to eight hours yesterday into last night, a hurricane over the water. There were no hurricane force winds on land, it seems, but nevertheless it had the structure of a hurricane, uh, at least looking at radar and satellite presentation, developed an eye. Everything had kind of lined up and then the shear kicked in and literally kicked Elsa uh, apart there, kind of separating the different levels of the atmosphere and the structure. But this morning it came back together just enough and you can see some of these deep thunderstorms in here rotating around that center of circulation. And you see this bubbling motion of the clouds down here in southwest Florida still, all the way up through the east coast areas. It's a big impact event impacting a lot of people across the Sunshine State. And it's going to continue to do so as it moves inland here up the southeast coastline inland with the circulation center. But the feeder bands and the clouds and the rain will extend over a pretty large area and that'll make travel difficult on I-10, I-95, portions of I-4 and then any of your U.S. and secondary highways. That is a problem. People are going to hydroplane. There's going to be ponding of water and so interstate travel, especially for our truckers, got to keep an eye on you guys. Seriously, it's a big deal. You're transporting our goods across this great country. You got to be careful out there slow down, take it easy, give those truckers some extra room yourselves if you're traveling in your SUV, your truck, or your sedan, or your Tesla, or whatever. Absolutely serious about this. That is a hazard. Rain is an impact. All right, and we can see that rain very clearly here on the radar. This is a really neat radar animation site from Mark Nissenbaum. I'll just kind of highlight that in the URL here. It's over at Florida State University that he puts this together. We really appreciate that in the weather world. So here's Elsa down in Florida and you can see it's got a pretty big footprint. It's not just the center of circulation and the core or the eye, if you will. I mean, there's not really an eye, but you get the idea. It's a large system and it's affecting a, a good deal of Florida here. Even some small feeder band showers starting to rotate up towards Georgia and South Carolina down in the low country there, Savannah, I-16 corridor, I-95 going through Chatham County. Yep, it's going to be busy throughout the day with more inclement weather headed your way. So be careful down there. Again, I'll emphasize that over and over. You have to watch out if you're driving. Interesting feature over here in Texas associated with more of an upper level low and a little bit of a surface reflection. Uh, some heavier rain along the Texas coast, but not a tropical entity per se, even though I bet it does feel tropical out there this morning. So let's zoom in a little closer here, a longer radar loop, and uh, really, really interesting to see how this has made landfall. It does appear uh, up in the Steenhatchee Horseshoe Beach area. This is Cedar Key. Horseshoe Beach, I think, is up here, or maybe right there. And then Steenhatchee, somewhere up in here, roughly. I know my geography pretty well. Maybe it's not exactly right down there, but you get the general idea. Looks like landfall has happened. You still have onshore flow coming up all through this region. So there will be some storm surge and elevated water levels through this area, but nothing major. I'll show you that in just a moment, what the cameras are showing that we have set up. But owing to my point earlier, look, there's all this rain on the eastern side of the state and even a few showers trying to get going and then they dissipate over central Florida and this will be off and on throughout the day as Elsa progresses uh, inland and the tail of it still affecting southwest Florida and then this whole mess going back to the larger picture going to work its way up through this region 
over the next day or so. So a lot of rain, maybe some severe weather, a small tornado, brief tornado here and there. Not a major big impact event in terms of wind, but it will impact a lot of people along its track uh, over the next few days. All right, so let's take a look at what our cameras are showing. We've set up quite a few of them down here in Florida in anticipation of Elsa. In the Sarasota area, um, it's passed, you know, so the worst of the weather has passed, so the water down there is nice and calm. But when we go north into the Tampa Bay region, we still have a pretty stiff southerly flow of the wind coming across here. And as a result, our cameras here out on the Courtney uh, Campbell Causeway shows, if this will load for me quickly, please nest, thank you very much. A little bit of spillover from the rocks there along the pathway here just off of the causeway. People like to jog out there, take a nice morning walk or whatever. Um, you know, not as much as we saw during Ada. Ada actually put the water across the causeway by a little bit, especially on the southbound side, and Elsa not able to do that. And you know, this is nothing major at all, keeping it all in perspective, absolutely. But it does give you an idea of the impacts out here. People doing a morning stroll, you know, a little bit of water splashing up and a stiff breeze. That's about it. Scooting up the coast a bit, we have cameras that we have set out up in the Cedar Key area and a weather station. I'll show you these real quick. The worst of it has passed for Cedar Key. Our secondary camera that we had here, uh, the battery ran out. I forgot to put a fully charged battery in there, so that's that's on me. But that's okay, that's why we have all these cameras. And our other one, we had two in Cedar Key, right down at the waterfront, and the other one here on the restaurant, this classic shot that we've used years and years and years, uh, going all the way back to Hermine in 2016. I'll take it full screen for you real quick. Yeah, a little bit agitated of a, uh, the gulf out there. We've certainly seen worse, and this is just mainly wave action coming in. Um, because of the way that the coastline is oriented to the south there. You get the stiff onshore flow. It's real easy to kind of jack up the, the water there. Not much of a surge, so not much inundation to worry about. So flooding, not a big concern. And we can see that here on the bridge. This is Highway 24. This is our weather station uh, pegged um, probably, let's see, it was about 38 and some change miles per hour earlier. This data is saved every minute on our server, and I was watching it in real time, and we got right up to about tropical storm force in a gust, and that's about it. The sustained wind was 25 to 35, so you know nothing major, obviously, but really neat to see this in action. You can see the flow of the water getting pushed along by the wind there. A really, really nice deployment of this camera system and weather station. We're going to do this in the future, by the way. We have three of these uh, full uh, weather stations with the anemometer here from RM Young, the computer, and the little pressure sensor inside of the box, and everything is clamped to the jersey wall there, the concrete wall. And then we put a camera, which is pretty much the same looking device, but it's got a camera case on it that we can watch this. It helps us to keep it safe hopefully deterring anybody from messing with it because we will see them if they do it and put it on social media and destroy their lives. Ha ha. But it also gives us a good look at what's happening, something unique where you can actually watch the weather data and the video feed of what's going on all at the same time. And you can see the wind right now, 19 gusting to 26, and the pressure uh, got down to about 1,008 in some change. I think it was like 1,008.2 earlier, so the pressure didn't dip that low either. And that makes sense. Elsa, not that intense of a storm. Lastly, moving up the coast here, where I got one more to show you actually. This is Horseshoe Beach, and now the surge starting to come in here with the wave action. Um, again, keeping it in perspective, it has been worse here in the past. Hermine comes to mind in 2016. Uh, and this is just some good wave action, putting the water level up a little bit, nothing major. But nevertheless, a neat way to show you the impacts where we can be in multiple locations at one time. All of this is from our interactive tracking map through the Hurricane Track Insider site. And we fund that through Patreon. The link to how to join all of that is in the description of the video. 
A couple more to show you. This is Jacksonville, Orange Park to be specific, at one of our supporters' backyards. And I will add Lib as we wait for Nest to populate the video screen. Come on, Nest. Oh, there it was. I, I gave up too quickly. There it is. Hey, look, there's Michael himself, Mr. Hurd. When he watches this video, he'll get a good kick out of this. Not very breezy out there yet, as Elsa is not a very windy storm. And then finally, the Kramers, another one of our supporters. We gave them one of our cameras, and they put it in their backyard. This is mostly going to be rain and some breezes in their trees there. But this is the power of crowdfunding and crowdsourcing of people and resources. Um, maybe when Elsa leaves the Outer Banks, we'll get a good view of it here from our Rodanthe camera. But today, gorgeous on the Outer Banks. All right, so let's get back to what's going on with Elsa. Speaking of its future, this is the GFS. There's Elsa right there at the 850 millibar level. Fairly well organized down at those lower levels. It's just the, that the stronger upper level winds, the mid-level winds especially, and some dry air nearby didn't allow Elsa to really reach um, a stronger potential that you would see typically in August and September. And believe me, nobody down here is complaining about that. This was a close call. That track that Elsa took, not ideal for those of us and I'm here now in Sarasota, so I'm part of it right now. But yes, the people of Florida had just assumed that Elsa stays weak. And for the most part, that's what it did wind-wise and overall impacts. So let's put this into motion. It goes inland further today up into the southeast, bringing rain and squally weather. That's what all those colors are, that orange and yellow. That's all the vorticity or the energy spreading inland there. Finally off the Delmarva. And into the Atlantic it goes. We can broaden the shot. I'll show you where it ends up. And just so you know where you're looking, right there. That's Elsa down in the Carolinas. And this is about 36 hours out. And it moves along, maybe. There we go. Off the Delmarva past maybe Cape Cod. Some squally weather there. And then finally up into the Canadian Maritimes. Absorbed into the westerlies up here on the north side of our big old subtropical ridge. And as you can tell also, this is about 84 hours out. No other areas down in the deep tropics, nothing in the Caribbean or the Gulf. We are entering a period of suppressed activity. That happens even in your busiest of seasons. You get these ebbs and flows. And right now, I guess it's ebbing into the direction of not much activity for the time being. And we can keep moving this out. I mean, heck, I'll just show you the next 10 days. Nothing out there. This is day 10 right there. And we just rewind the clock a little bit. There's Elsa going through. And then the pattern remains pretty clear. One tropical wave came off really high latitude right here. What is that, Morocco or something over there? My goodness. Let me rewind that a little bit. Look at that piece of energy that comes out of Africa at a fairly high latitude at day 5. The Saharan air layer will absolutely kill that off as it gets out into the Atlantic. But really nothing to shake a stick at out there, whatever that expression means. A weak tropical wave here at about day eight or nine or so, something like that. Um, nothing to worry about as we move further into July. And again, that is expected even in these busy seasons. Now, transitioning to a look ahead. A tweet from Ben Knoll, our good friend down in New Zealand here. ECMWF came out with its seasonal update. It does so in the beginning of each month. The seasonal long-range forecasting. What is it saying? Warmer than average fall, favored for the United States. And he's talking about a little bit of winter here. We'll get to that later. We do cover winter stuff here, but it's hurricane season. And speaking of that, the European seasonal guidance indicating an ACE, which is the Atlantic, or I'm sorry, the accumulated, and it's for the Atlantic and anywhere in the globe, the accumulated cyclone energy, kind of like how many points should the team score tonight? You know, maybe somebody has a projection for a football team or a basketball team. Well, this is the projection for the hurricane season, Atlantic ACE, 120% of normal. And just for reference, this time last year, the record-setting 2020, the European was forecasting an ACE of 100% of normal, 
and we ended up with 30 name storms. So make of that what you will. I'm just pointing it out that this year it's 20% higher than what it was forecasting one year ago. You know, that's, I don't know, we'll see, right? Uh, but I will say this, the next bullet point that Ben has, ENSO cool neutral, ENSO means El Nino Southern Oscillation, cool neutral or La Nina double dip during the winter, there's some of its guidance. A lot of the ensemble members showing a dip towards La Nina. We can click on this graphic, I'll show you larger what it shows. This is again the ECMWF from the 1st of July here and a lot of that guidance envelope dipping down some of it. Solid La Nina. Why does that matter? Well, let's go to the SOI. I'll show you this real quick. This is a measurement of the pressure pattern across the tropical Pacific and after a dip in May and June it is really starting to come up again and that shows that the pressure pattern is changing. One that has more stronger trade winds and that helps to generate that cooler La Nina look that Ben references here and that the ECMWF is signaling in the long range guidance there going towards the winter time and that could affect the Atlantic hurricane season making it more robust and just finally ending the uh, update here all of this matters because look we're starting to see cool anomalies showing up again in the tropical Pacific out here after it warmed up briefly over the last six weeks or so we're starting to see it cool off again while the main development region of the Atlantic is warming some cold off the coast of Africa due to some strong uh, easterly flow coming off of there but the deep tropics out here warmer than average the Atlantic warmer overall the Pacific colder overall and that usually equates to a very busy hurricane season for the Atlantic and more than likely a suppressed western Pacific season and usually when that happens the Atlantic is quite busy. All right well that is it from me for today again I'm down in the Sarasota area with my colleague Mike Watkins. Well it used to be Mike Watkins. We talked with Mike Watkins on Twitter and texting. Mike Farrow, I have a lot of Mikes that work with me. Mike Cornelius, Mike Watkins, Mike Farrow. Hey, I'm not kidding. And Michael Hurd, our supporter, our patron up in Orange, uh, Orange Park, Florida. I'm tired. It's okay. Uh, but yes, Mike Farrow and I have been working down here. Uh, we're going to wait for Elsa to get further inland and then start pulling up our cameras from south to north today and eventually make our way back home to Wilmington, hopefully by late tomorrow night. And uh, that'll be it for Elsa. And then we'll wait and see what the rest of July brings. Hopefully nothing, so we can all kind of relax until peak season in August and September. All right, so we are on the social media circuit, Facebook and Twitter. I'm trying to highlight it down there for you in the corner. And we are crowdfunded through Patreon, a truly remarkable thing where you can support all of our project aspects here, the live camera systems, the wind data, uh, any, you know, our original series that we have, the Hurricane Highway, our podcast that we do in the off season called Stories from the Hurricane Highway. Very interactive, awesome community, um, over 600 strong. So if you want to become a part of it, it's never too late to join up and see what we are doing here. Really innovative work supported 100% by you all. Very remarkable thing. I always appreciate it and I'm just marvel at what we are able to do because of you guys. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Thanks as always for giving me a little bit of your attention. I am Mark Suddeth down in Sarasota, Florida. For now anyway, I will talk to you again tomorrow.